This is Servant Marcia Carney with Escape to Heaven. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. His anointing is empowering. The kingdom of the Lord is within me. And He's calling me to the heavenly. Be seated in heavenly places, just like heaven, just like heaven on earth. To be walking in His favor and grace, just like heaven, just like heaven on earth. Good morning, Tallahassee. You're listening to Wave 94, 94.1, Heaven on Earth Ministries of Jesus Christ. And the message today is, can we escape to heaven? Will we escape? Or are we a part of the group called deluded? Are you deluded? You know, in the Bible, it talks about this delusion that God is going to send in the end times. So that's what we're going to talk about this morning. We'll go to the Word of God. And as always, we go to the Bible. Genesis, I want to start at the very beginning. First chapter, first verse. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Let's stop and pause there because in the beginning was the Word. Word was with God. The Word was God. And everything that God has done has been done in a perfect manner. Somewhere in the Bible, it talks about how when the earth was created, that God created the earth to be inhabited. So something happened by the time We get to Genesis, the first chapter and the second verse. And it reads, it says, the earth was without form. Well, that doesn't make sense. That goes against the concept of a perfect and excellent God, a God that designed the entire universe. How now is the earth void? Without form, darkness on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of the Lord is hovering over the face of the waters. That in itself let us know that water is still there. (laughs) So in the beginning, God created everything. And then there comes this moment where the earth was without form and void. So this morning, we're going to pose or ponder or look into the Word of God to see if we could gain some understanding about how did we get to Genesis 1, 2, and are you and I on that road again? It's all, are all of the nations of the world on the road back to Genesis 1, 2? I don't know. We'll find out. Let's roll to Jeremiah, the fourth chapter, and starting with verse number one through four, it says, if you will return, O Israel, and we we utilize Israel as an example because, you know, the Lord selected and chose Israel to be ambassadors in the midst of the nations that were all Gentiles or, or not serving the Lord back in the days of the Tower of Babel, when he separated all the nations. So we will go and look at Israel for our lives today. And Jeremiah, the fourth chapter, first verse says, If you will return, O Israel, says the Lord, return to me. If you will put away your abominations out of my sight, then you shall not be moved. And you shall swear the Lord lives in truth and judgment and in righteousness. The nations shall bless themselves in him and in him they shall glory. Now that was the intent of Israel to stand out as a glorified and evidence of the Lord himself exists. And when you look at Israel, you would see the glory of the Lord. For thus says the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem. Break up your folly ground, 
uh, you know, circumcise yourselves to the Lord. Take away the foreskins of your heart. And if you don't, my fury will come upon you like fire and burn so that no one can quench it because of the evil of your doings. Uh, that's, that's some harsh words right there. And if we were to look at Jeremiah the ninth chapter to try to gain understanding, well, what, what does the Lord mean when he say there's that evil, that he would burn them up, that no one could quench the fire that he released upon them? So if we go to Jeremiah the ninth chapter, verses starting at verse number three, to get an understanding, and this is what he's saying. You know, that um, he's weeping for them, but they're all adulterers. So that means they do not honor marriage. They're an assembly of treacherous people. They're like their bowls. They have bent their tongues for lies. So everyone lie. They are not valiant for the truth on the earth. And they proceed from evil to evil. And they do not know the Lord, says the Lord himself. And everyone watches his neighbor, do not trust any brother, for every brother will utterly supplant, and every neighbor will walk with slanderers, so they talk evil about each other. Everyone will deceive his neighbor, will not speak the truth, they talk their tongue to speak lies, they weary themselves, they exhaust themselves by committing iniquity upon iniquity. And uh, through deceit, they refuse to know me, says the Lord. Therefore, here's the warning that God gave. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will refine them and try them. For how shall I deal with my people? Their tongue is an arrow shot out, and all it speaks is deceit. They'll speak peaceably to their neighbor with the mouth, but in their heart, they lie in wait to destroy them. And listen to the question that the Lord poses. He says, shall I not punish them for these things, says the Lord? Shall I not avenge myself on such a nation as this? And these are his people. And so today, you know, looking at us, the believers, we're not even talking about sinners who do not know the Lord. We're just talking about those of us that go to church, read the Bible, and we say that we're attempting to live the way how the Lord has asked us to live. Are we the group that, are we so deceitful ourselves that the Lord is looking at us as well. Because he does say that he will make it a heap of ruins and he will make the cities desolate without an inhabitant. Let's go back to Jeremiah 4th chapter because God does issue a warning to believers. Declare in Judah and proclaim in Jerusalem and say, blow the trumpet in the land, cry, Gather together, assemble yourselves. Let us go into the fortified city, set up the standard, take refuge, do not delay. And the reason why the Lord issued that warning through Jeremiah to Israel, he says, for I will bring disaster and great destruction and that the destroyer of nations is on the way. And the intent is to make the land desolate. Your cities will be laid waste without inhabitant. Is that the future of great cities, great countries like America, Mexico, France, Russia, all of these cities? Well, particularly today, we would look more at America, who stand, who, who has stood as a beacon of individuals that trust in the Lord, the creator of heaven and earth. So if this word went to any nation at all, it would be to America. The destroyer of nations is on the way. And so we are to repent and seek the face of the Lord and 
so that his fierce anger could be turned back. But if we don't change as a nation or as individuals, and it shall come to pass in that day, says the Lord, Jeremiah 4, chapter, verse 9, that the heart of the king or the president shall perish, heart of the princes, the priests shall be astonished, and the prophets shall wonder. Then I said, Jeremiah said, O oh Lord God, Surely you've deceived the people. You, you, you says you shall, they shall have peace. And then at this time, it will be said that a dry wind will go through the land so that God himself can speak judgment against them. So I want to pose a question to us. Are we being positioned to receive judgment from the Lord? Because he shall come up like clouds, his chariots like a whirlwind. And uh, one more warning is being issued to America, Australia, all of the nations that have stood, even Africa. You know, uh, wash your heart, wash your heart from wickedness that you may be saved how long shall your evil thoughts lodge within you? And the uh, watchers are coming from a far country. And uh, the reason is because these nations, any nation that will not return to the Lord, has been rebellious against me, says the Lord. Your ways and your doings, have procured these things for you. This is your wickedness because it is bitter, because it reaches to your heart. And so that is the judgment. <clears throat> Jeremiah 4, chapter, verse 22. And, and the judgment lets us know that there's the sound of the trumpet, the alarm of war, destruction upon destruction, and the whole land is plundered. And the reason, the Lord says, because my people are foolish. They have not known the Lord. They have not known me. So when we do not stop and give time to learning the Lord, not just living um, a type of religious behavior where we go to church on Sunday and we do what we want the rest of the week and we don't really repent. We just cry some tears if we feel something in church, maybe. But that's not what the Lord has asked of us. We are to be transformed, changed. We are to know him. Otherwise, we are called by the Lord himself, silly children that have no understanding and are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. And here's what happened when this occurred before. And, and I'm saying before, before the Father, the Creator, before God recreated or restored life again on earth. Back in Genesis, first chapter, verse number three. So what we're dealing with is Genesis one, verse number two. How did the earth become void? And here's the answer, Jeremiah, the fourth chapter, verse 23, I beheld the earth. And this is Jeremiah. He's seeing what will happen as the Lord plunder, or as he had done before, the earth. I beheld the earth, and indeed, it was without form and void, and the heavens, they had no light. I beheld the mountains. They trembled, and all the hills moved back and forth, and there was no man, and all the birds of the heavens have fled, and indeed the fruitful land was a wilderness, and obviously there were cities. You know, could that be the reason why we're finding so many ruins of civilizations that's like 15,000, 20,000, 8,000, way beyond the 6,000 years of history that we're in the midst of right now. Could it possibly be 
as it appeared to be, that Jeremiah 4th chapter, verse 23, occurred. And thus we have Genesis 1-2. Because what happened is cities existed, but they were all broken down at the presence of the Lord by his fierce wrath. For thus says the Lord, the whole land shall be desolate. Yet I will not make a full end for this shall the earth mourn and the heavens above be black because I have spoken. I have purposed and will not relent, nor will I turn back from it. So I am thinking that this could have happened, probably did back in Genesis 1, that the whole city Every city is forsaken, and no man shall dwell in them. And then on top of everything else, the Lord says, and what will you do when you are plundered by me? What will you do? You'll clothe yourself with crimson. You'll adorn yourself with gold. You'll enlarge your eyes with paint. In vain, you will make yourself beautiful and fair. But your lovers will despise you. They will instead seek your life to kill you. So delusion, that's delusion, where you are destroyed and yet you do not know it. What is the solution? I went over and I was led by the Spirit of the Lord to Colossians, the third chapter. And it says, if then you would be raised with Christ, then we should seek those things which are above, where Christ is seated, sitting at the right hand of God. So in this hour, set your mind on things above, not on things in the world, things on the earth for you died and your life. And that's why I believe this is more towards believers about this delusion thing, because you died and your life is hidden with Christ and God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him to glory. <clears throat> so while we're on earth, <clears throat> and, and at that moment, what it's talking about is not the rapture. It's talking about the second coming. That's after the rapture, after the three and a half years in heaven for the marriage and preparation for war here on earth. What are we to do? Colossians, the third chapter, verse five says, therefore put to death. It says, better to die now while we're here on earth. Put to death your members, your body, which are on the earth. And, and don't commit these things. Fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, covetousness. And covetousness is idolatry. Because these things, because of these things, The wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience in which we were all once like that when we lived in that world. So we are to put off the following items. Anger. If you're a believer, you have no reason to walk with anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth, lying to one another. Why? Because you've put off the old man and have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge according to the image of the father who created him. So it doesn't matter if you are an Israelite, a Jew, or if you're a Gentile, it doesn't matter. If you're free, or a slave, it doesn't matter because Christ is all and in all. Therefore, those of us that have decided to follow the ways of God, the elect of God, holy and beloved, we must put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering, bearing with one another, forgiving one another. And even if we have a complaint, as Christ forgave, You, you must forgive them. And above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. So a lot of us say we strive to be perfect. Well, let's see if love is prevailing in your life on a daily basis. Otherwise, we are headed towards Genesis 1-2 again. 
Second Thessalonians, second chapter says, Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, now this is the rapture, and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled. Okay, let no one deceive you by any means, for that rapture, that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed. The son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, and this is Paul talking to the Thessalonians, I told you these things, and now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Well, what is restraining the son of perdition from being, you know, everybody, they have all kinds of videos about who is the Antichrist. Yet he will not be shown until two things occur, at least the falling away, the apostasy, the rapture. And the rapture means that Jesus, who is alive in us, believers, is taken away from the earth. So now there's nothing to restrain evil. I mean, saints of God, we are more important than we like to think we are. Because we are carriers of the light, the real light, the light of the world, which is Jesus. So only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And when the law and then the lawless one will be revealed. His destiny, however, is that he will be consumed with the breath of, of the Lord's mouth and destroyed with the brightness of of Jesus coming back. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth. So the word of God then is, is really the truth. And if you will not receive Jesus, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And further down in John, it says the Word became flesh so and dwelt among them, and even his own did not know him. So, And then it tells us that Jesus came with truth and grace. Okay, so if you do not receive the love of the truth, that you might be saved. For this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. And so we started out this morning saying, are we deluded? Are you deluded? Are you living a life that the truth cannot penetrate because you do not love the truth? And if not, your destiny is Second Thessalonians 2nd chapter, verse 11 and for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So I'm saying I agree with Paul that we are to give thanks to God because God from the beginning chose you and I for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, and belief in the truth, to which he called you by the gospel for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's mainly what I wanted. I was hoping we'd understand that, you know, that before, way back, before God created Adam and Eve, Something happens on earth. And when we look at Jeremiah, the fourth chapter, we can see what happened. That mankind became so evil that the earth was destroyed. <laughs> and and um, it appears, I don't know how it was destroyed. I wasn't there, but 
It was destroyed to the point where it was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the earth. And yet the Spirit of the Lord hovered over the face of the water, so that kind of implies that maybe it was water or flood, and said, let there be light. And there was light. And notice over in Thessalonians, when he's talking about the son of perdition would be revealed and that he can only be revealed when the restrainer is taken away. And the restrainer is the light. You know, even in John, it says how the darkness did not comprehend the light. And so you and I today, by our lifestyles, by putting on love, the perfection, that bond, putting that on and removing ourselves from the works of wickedness and evil, we allow the light of the Creator to shine through us. I'm going to pray today, Father. I ask you, Lord, to touch our being, touch our spirit, our soul, our body, Lord, and let us conform to your will. Let us be transformed, our minds be renewed by your word, Lord God, and give us a heart to just serve and a heart to love one another. Let us forgive those who have harmed us. I ask you today to bless mankind throughout the entire earth. And Lord God, have mercy upon us. Let us not wander down the road of repeat history and put ourselves in a position, Lord, will we, the earth, would be destroyed again, even though we know the, the words of prophecy. But Lord God, we still ask for more time to serve you, more time to get it right, more time for us to repent and return to you as you have asked, as you're pleading in Jesus' name. Lord, touch our children, our children's children, heal our land, heal our bodies. And Lord, I ask that we, your people, if we would just, you know, as it says, if we would confess our sins, you're you're faithful and just to forgive us, God. But you also say if we would turn from our wicked ways, Lord, ultimately you would heal our land. So Lord, I ask you today to hear our plea and let us not be deluded. And Father, heal our land and give our generations even more time to comply and to not be sons of disobedience. Amen. Amen.